Welcome back to The Lemon Factor. I'm Chad, and today we are going to take a look at coilovers available for the 10th generation Honda Accord. So 10th generation being the 2018 and newer Honda Accord. And like the last video that we did on lowering springs, and if you haven't seen that video, I've included a link in the description below. Go take a look at that. Like the lowering springs, there are plenty of coilovers available for the Honda Accord. So yay, good for us. But similar to the lowering springs, sometimes when there's a lot to choose from, a lot of uh, different options for someone, it becomes a little overwhelming in sorting out what is the best product for you. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm gonna go through nine different coilovers available for the Honda Accord. We are going to take a look at those coilovers from a pricing perspective, from a spring rate perspective. We're gonna take a look at the adjustability and then some unique features uh, found in some of these. All in an effort to help you make an informed decision and make sure that you're buying the right product for you. So if you're interested, stay tuned. And I have a special bonus. For those of you that have a touring model Honda Accord, you should definitely take a look at this because there are some unique um, nuances because of the touring models adaptive suspension, the ADS, you will want to be aware of how changing the coilovers will impact your adaptive suspension. So stay tuned. Please consider subscribing if you are interested in modifying your 2018 plus, your 10th generation Honda Accord, both from an aesthetic standpoint as well as a performance, and you'd like to find out more information of what's available, how to's on the installation. In addition to our Honda Accord, we also have a 2019 Mazda Miata. RF. If you don't have a Mazda uh, Miata, if you don't have a Honda Accord and you're just interested in joining us on the journey to see what's out there, or if you're potentially considering modifying your car, think about subscribing. And as a so let's quickly go through the nine different, the nine different coilovers that we're going to be reviewing today. In, in no particular order, include the Godspeed Mono SS one, the Tan Street Basis Z, the Tan Street Advance Z, and the Tan Flex Z, the Megan Racing Easy Street Series, the Godspeed Max, the BC Racing BR Series, the D2 Racing RS Series, and lastly, the RSR Sports. So that's the nine different coilovers we're going to review and let's jump into the first aspect. So usually price is the first thing that pops up. What can you afford? What can't you afford? For most of us, we are price sensitive. So we want to make sure that we're getting the best value for our dollar spent. And of the nine that I went through, the prices range between $700 and $1,800. So Definitely a broad uh, range. I do feel confident that one of these coilovers will probably be the right coilover for you. And by the way, this is not all inclusive, so I'm sure that there are other coilovers for the 2019 Honda Accord that are out there that are not on the list. Hopefully this helps you identify things to look for if you're considering one of those. The first chart we're gonna take a look at is the coilovers based on prices. And as I mentioned, the pricing ranges between $700 and $1,800. The Godspeed Mono SS is the cheapest at $700. And then we go through the TAN, the Megan Racing, the uh, TAN Street Advance Z, the Godspeed Max, the BC Racing BR Series, the TAN Flex Z in the D2 Racing RS Series, and then finally ending up with the RSR. So you can see the prices here, 700 through $1,800. So that's what you have to work with. So now that you know that, automatically for some of you, you may be omitting some of these coilovers just based on the pricing alone. And by the way, this isn't even the street pricing. This is just the, I did a quick 
search, usually on the manufacturer's website, and this is what came up. So I'm sure you can find them cheaper, uh, but at least this gives you a range, a comparable range to one another. So aside from the pricing, which by the way, coilovers can be a hell of a lot more than just $1,800. There are some full race spec custom coilovers out there for both any car that can go in the two, three, four thousand dollar range. We're keeping it reasonable. Uh, so next, we're going to talk about spring rate. So now that you have an idea of what you can afford, let's talk about the spring rates that are available. So I've sorted the chart by spring rate now, and the spring rates range from, as you can see here, 280 pounds per inch in the front and 280 pounds per inch in the rear uh, to a high of 448 pounds per inch in the front and 448 pounds per inch in the rear. So that is actually um, a pretty broad range. And how would I recommend you view this is if you're looking for coilovers for performance and you're looking or potentially considering racing the car, whether it's autocross or circuit or any other racing, the higher spring rates will help, but at the same time, the higher spring rates will be a little less comfortable on the street than a lower spring rate would be. If you are considering coilovers for aesthetics purposes and you want to have that adjustability for height and lowering, then you might want to consider something in the middle of the road or something on the lighter side. So on the lighter or less aggressive spring rates, closer to your stock spring rates, we have the 310, the Street Basis Z, the Street Advance Z, and the Flex Z, all between the 280 pounds per inch to the 336. If you're just doing it for aesthetics and this is a daily driver and you still want to have some comfort, I would recommend a lower spring rate. If you're looking at something that really can perform um, on the track, then go with a higher spring rate, but know that you're gonna give up a little bit of comfort. And by the way, I say a little bit because it's not just dependent upon the spring rate, it's also based on your dampening and the ability to adjust that dampening. So I've included a, co a column here regarding the adjustment capability and how much adjustment you have with these spring rates. For the most part, even at a low of 14 way with the Megan Racing, I do consider that probably sufficient for most individuals. Sure, you have the Godspeed Max at 40 way adjustable, and that'll definitely give you a hell of a lot more fine tuning, um, but I don't necessarily believe that that is necessary. I do think with even the ones that are the 16 and the 15 way, that you'll find your right level of comfort uh, within that adjustability range. One thing to point out is the TAN Street Basis Z does not have adjustable dampening. So that to me kinda, in a way, almost defeats the purpose of ha installing a coilover as opposed to a spring. When you're adjusting the height of the car, which most people are gonna move to coilovers for a handful of reasons. One being that it gives you a combination of springs that were made to fit the shocks as opposed to in a stock car just going with lowering springs. Those springs were not developed to work well uh, with your stock shocks. So going to a coilover, you know the combination of the two uh, was built together to work in unison, which is great, right? But you also, with a spring, you get a fixed ride height reduction. And with coilovers, you get the flexibility, the full range of flexibility to lower your car. If you want it one day slammed you know, to the ground, let's call it two and a half inches. But then you know, after that meet or whatever you're doing with that car, you know, your daily driver, you can bump that back up to maybe an inch drop. So it's great coilovers, having that flexibility is really important to a lot of people. But when it comes to the height adjustment, most of these coilovers, as you see in the height adjustability column, I've identified as shock. And what that means is you can adjust the shock itself for height adjustment, and that doesn't impact the spring as opposed to the two tan, the Street Basis Z and the Street Advance Z being spring. That one, you have a collar that you adjust and what it's actually doing is compressing your springs themselves, which will give you 
uh, limited or a restricted range of motion within your shock and to me isn't considered ideal. I would personally buy a coilover that adjusts the shock and not compresses the spring. That way you know that even when you're lowering the car to the lowest level it can go with these coilovers, you're not drastically impacting the ride quality or the dampening that's available. Next is what is really important to those of you that have the Honda Accord Touring model. So the Touring model has the ADS, the Adaptive Suspension System. Uh, that Adaptive Suspension System, although great, if you change out your Adaptive Suspension to a coilover, then you will, as a result, you will throw a code on your dash that will indicate that there's a problem. And by the way, there's not necessarily a problem. You've just changed um, your parts and it's not talking to your computer to tell you, no, this is okay. We've just swapped out the older adjustable shocks and springs to a coilover system. So if you pick any of these, for the most part, all of these are compatible with the touring model. The only thing is you will get a light on your dash, which for some could be extremely annoying. The good thing is, at least with the D2 Racing RS series, you'll see here I put an N slash Y, and there's a price range of, of shocks for the RS series between 1100 or 1400 D2 Racing does offer a bypass module for the adaptive suspension touring model, model where yes, you're gonna spend a hefty sum of $300, but what that will do is that'll talk to uh, your car's computer and let it know that everything's okay, i.e. you will not have, or at least according to the D2 Racing's website, you will not have a light uh, constantly illuminated on your dash. So for some of you, I think that's a great option. Unfortunately, the other manufacturers don't seem to, to offer that. Again, touring model owners, please be aware. Now, some of the other features available based on, again, manufacturer's notes on the website, so you can go take a look at it, that are noteworthy, at least for me, is that the BC Racing has custom spring rates and dampening available. So yes, you'll have to spend a little bit more than the indicated $1,000, but if you're trying to really dial that in and you have specific spring rates or dampening in mind, they will make custom coilovers for you. And then as it pertains to the TAN, the TAN for the Street Advance Z and the Flex Z coilovers, both of those have the option for the EDFC. They're EDFC compatible. And what does that mean? Let's jump to the website. We'll take a quick look at that. Okay, jumping to the TAN web website, I brought up the Street Advanced Basis Z uh, coilovers for the Honda Accord. And if you scroll all the way down, you'll be able to find this information yourself. But the two coilovers that TAN has that offers compatibility with their EDFC. Uh, and their EDFC it offers easy dampening force adjustment or capability. And that's an option. So it's not included in the price that you see here on the char chart, but it might be something that an optional feature that may be really important to you. There's a, apparently a motor installed here instead of an adjustment dial to adjust the dampening. And as I stated, this is the Street Advance Series Z, and it gives you different abilities to remotely control the dampening of your coilovers from within the vehicle itself. So you can see here at the top, they have the EDFC Active Pro, they have the EDFC Active in the EDFC 2, and of course, like anything else, these three options give you different ability uh, to remotely control your shocks. You can see under here, individual wheel control, uh, cornering reactive, acceleration, deceleration reactive, speed reactive, wireless control, right? This is a wireless control as well. Gives you a little less features. And then you have the basic electronic dampening force controller. Not inexpensive, but something that all of you may wanna consider, right? What is my recommendation? Take a look at the chart, now sorted. I do like the Tan Flex Z. It's at a decent, a decent price point at $1,050. So from a pricing perspective, it's not on the high end, not on the cheap end. 
I like the spring rate. So the number one thing that I'm going to take a look at, yes, even before the price, at least as far as these nine, are the spring rates. As such, I'm probably gonna steer clear of the two God speeds that have spring rates of 448, and that's why I highlighted those in red, right? They're on the high end and they're in yellow. They're probably not, not the right choice for me, but for some of you, they might be. I took away the height adjustability based on the spring, and I put those two, the two tan at the bottom because, strictly because of that. So if you're looking for a lower price coilover that has a spring rate closer to stock and you want some adjustability and you don't have a touring model, but you're not looking to necessarily slam the car or do it on a regular basis, then maybe that Street Advanced Z might be right for you. But for me, I'd want the adjustability for height to be based on the shock and not the spring itself. I also would want adjustability in the dampening and those two tans at the bottom do not offer those things. So that's why those were out. And then as I mentioned, the two Godspeeds just have a spring rate higher than what I would look for. RSR, as you can imagine, the price point of $1,800 is just out of my price range personally. So that leaves the three in the green, the Tan Flex Z, the BC Racing BR, series, the D2 Racing RS series, and the Megan Racing Easy Street series. And for these, if you have a touring model like we do with our, our project car here, then that bypass module could be a pretty neat feature. Um, so that's why I put that up in the green, just to have that ability to include that. I think the 36-way adjustability is great. I put a question mark, mark next to the shock because it wasn't extremely clear if that was based on the shock. So assuming it is, you know, it definitely gets up there. The spring rates in the front at 420 pounds per inch, a little on the high side, but that might be all right. So really at the end of the day, I think the price points are there, the spring rates are there, the adjustability is there. With the Flex Z, if I wanted to upgrade to the EDFC, that is always an option. So that's my justification for my list. I welcome all feedback. Let me know what you think of these coilovers. If you have direct experience, both good and bad, comment below. What would you pick? If you're considering these, using this information, what coilover would you choose? And you know what? In the next video, I'm gonna tell you based on the review on the springs, the lowering springs we did last video, and then based on the information here we have on the coilovers, which one I will probably end up going with. So thank you for joining and until next time.